order of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, please, Kevin. Mr. Hazelworth. Mr. Haverly. Present. Mr. Kinzer. Here. Mr. Maxey. Here. Mr. Moon. Here. Mr. Mulholland. Here. Mr. Reeves. Here. Does anybody have any changes to the agenda that they would like to see tonight? And if not, can I have a motion in a second, please? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Mulholland and a second by Maxey. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Haverly. Yes. Mr. Kenzer? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yes. Mr. Moon? Yes. Mr. Mahon? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Motion passes. Raise this. Yes, Audience to visitors. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, Judy Hutchinson. Yes. Thank you for coming out tonight, Judy. It probably won't be necessary, but just in case it is, we typically try to keep these to five minutes. I don't know if that's going to be... Should be no problem. Okay. It's right. the next guy you got to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, hello, everybody. I'm Judy Hutchinson. Uh, just to give you a little background on me, I went to North Boone Schools, kindergarten through senior year, graduate of 1986. Um, I came back and I taught at North Boone from 1996 to 99, taught and coached. Um, brought my kids back, and my kids have been a part of the North Boone schools from third grade, third and fourth grade on. My oldest graduated last year. My youngest is a senior this year. Uh, and I'm also president of the North Boone Booster Club. So I have my hand in, I've seen a, a multifaceted in the, in, North Boone Community School District 200. Seen it from a, a bunch of different angles. When I brought my kids back, I didn't volunteer right away. I'm not, I'm more of a high school person. Taught high school, still teach high school. Um, so when I got, they got into high school, I volunteered with the North Boone Booster Club. First and foremost, I think what I want to make sure everybody understands is the Booster Club's here to help. That's what we need you to know. Wherever you decide to go, we're here to help. We have our own agenda. We definitely want to see my sons play sports. Uh, my oldest was football. When I traveled around, I'm gonna tell you our f football facilities, whatever you wanna say, are they're lacking. Just because we don't have the seating. If you think we have the seating, I strongly encourage you to come out and sit through a football game in our bleachers because I'm, I, those are the same bleachers I sat in when I was a kid, when I went to school here. Same bleachers, 78, when I watched my brothers play. The only thing different is it's less seating now than it was then because I used to sit in those bleachers and hang my feet over the edge and they took that away. We can do better. When I became North Boone Booster Club president, we can do better. How can we improve our facilities? I understand that maybe the... <laughs> Money is always an issue. It's always going to be an issue. And I don't envy the fact that here we are, we need to do this, and you're like, with what? I get that. But as an alumni, as a person, and none of this will affect my kids. My kids are gone. I have seven months. My youngest is out. I'm not here for my children. I'm here for the other kids. It's time. We've got to figure this out. We do. We've done little stuff. The Booster Club has tried to improve facilities as much as we can. The last meeting I was at, one of the things I heard was growth. If you want growth to come here, you have to look at your facilities. Because Belvedere North is right there. We're here. I brought my kids back because I love this community. This is where my heart is. This is where my memories are. Other people don't have that. So if they choose North, or they choose Rockford Christian, or they choose someplace else. I know I have people on the board. You went to school here, you gotta have some 
those same feelings that I do. This is your community. This is where you grew up. That's why you're here volunteering, is because you have a love for this. I'm just asking that if you decide to take this further, you work on these facilities, that you will work. Booster Club's here, we'll work. Say, hey, I need this. I'm gonna do my best to get you workers or get researchers to figure out. I think I've heard a lot of things. I, I'm starting to feel a thumbs up. I've heard design build, I've heard referendum. I've heard some things that I think, hey, maybe, maybe we can go. I'm not giving up. This is gonna be one of the things that I'm not gonna stop until this finally we get facilities that are on par with the other teams in our conference. I think it's only fair to our kids. Last but not least is a teacher part of me. Data, 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 data. Everybody's about data, data, data. As a teacher, to me it's about relationships. We have to build relationships with our students. We have to be, build relationships with our teachers. We have to build these relationships. This growth, everything you want, will come from relationships. When I first started teaching at North Boone, one of the things that made an impression on me as I had booster club, I had, um, excuse me, board members come in to my class and they observed. Why were they there? Possibly to build relationships. You're all here, volunteer basis. I do what I do with the booster club on a volunteer basis. The last thing I wanna say is thank you because you're giving up your time. I really appreciate it and Booster Club is here to help. Don't forget that. We all want what's best for the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hutchinson. Mr. Hutchinson. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the half hour I'm allowed to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Could end up sleeping on the couch this evening. <laughs> anyway, um, I wonder expand upon uh, what my wife and some of the other people in the audience uh, have thought. I volunteer to cook at the football games, and there's a buzz going around that there was, if you all remember, three, four years ago regarding the football field and uh, the track and so forth. And the buzz is we want to do something. That comes up every so often. I was here for the, the referendum that built this high school over here. I was in the middle of that. <coughs> And I remember the buzz was, well, we'll take care of the facilities later. But let me say something that people in the audience sometimes don't understand, people in the community don't understand, but I need them to understand. If it comes down to a third grader <clears throat> sitting next to a bucket of water that's dripping from the ceiling and a football team going six and three, take care of the third grader. And you have done that. You have done that. The thing is, it's not showy, it's not sexy to fix a roof. The football team going six and three, you know, that almost people will say, hey, they're six and three. That's a great school district. People don't have any idea whether that's good or not. Fixing the roof was more important. You have done that. You are to be commended for taking care of our facilities. Secure locks in the doors getting into the, into the various schools. You are to be commended for doing that. The buzz has always been around athletics and the football field, the bleachers, and it's important and it should be, and the track and so forth and so on. I say, yeah, it's time to take care of that too. Let's go for it. There's a buzz that's positive. Three years ago, what I witnessed here, come, and I come from the outside of the community, I more or less married into the community, and what I saw was a lot of uh, social media going back and forth and anger towards some of you people. You know, and back and forth as to a football team and whether we should support athletics. And there was so much division within the community. Shouldn't happen that way. Not for extracurriculars. And I'm gonna tell you something else. What happens in the chess club, what happens in choir, what happens in band is equally important to winning a basketball game or having a playoff team go to the playoffs. Those parents and those kids benefit from the extracurricular activities we have here. They benefit from that, and they do it Byron, they do it Stillman Valley, they do it Oregon. <clears throat> that is an extension of the classroom. And I think we all as a community, not just as a board, we have to look at it as, as a community, is that important to us? And I think it is. 
It's passionate. Athletics is passionate. You know, your kid participating and performing well in a play is passionate for you. It means something. The support is there if we do it in a positive way and we don't allow it to degrade like it did three, four years ago. That was pitiful. And I come from the outside communities of having lived in Oregon and Byron, I've seen what the positive can do. And that was absolutely pitiful. What we were yelling at each other, cussing each other out on social media? For this? For athletics? No, for a football field, for bleachers, it's more than the bleachers. It's more than the track. It's the whole extracurricular program. So I propose this to you. Maybe you've done this before, but the development of the, of the new schools. Is it time to set up a comprehensive ad hoc committee to take a look at the whole extracurricular program, K through 12? It shouldn't be on all Dr. Greenlee all the time. It shouldn't be on the board all the time. A comprehensive ad hoc committee that comes with bi-monthly or whatever uh, reports to the board, and maybe a terminal end at the end with you know uh, reports and uh, recommendations, something along that line. If we just focus on one aspect of this, I think we lose the opportunity to make everything overall better. So I would propose an ad hoc type of committee situation. Don't let it just be on you and getting those nasty emails and text messages. It doesn't have to be that way. An ad hoc committee can handle situations very similar to what we're doing tonight and handle input from the community that sometimes board meetings don't have time for. God knows I've sat through enough board meetings to know. You know, people come in, they're angry half the time. They don't need to be angry. Look what you've done in the last few years taking care of our students in our district. Done a good job, guys. You have, and I think we can continue. So I would say look at something else. Look at something else. I only got 20 more minutes here. So. <laughs> That's it. That's, that would be my recommendation is to look at it as a comprehensive uh, issue and maybe form a committee to say, hey, let's take a look at it. You've got the right people, the right administration, great teachers, good facilities that you've created. Let's go further. I think we can do it. Thank you. That's all we have for audience and visitors. <clears throat> That brings us to the treasure of the board. <coughs> it's Melissa's birthday, so it'd be nice to <laughs> Questions from Melissa? Thank you. That brings us to the superintendent's report. Yeah, just a few things. Um, your conference info has uh, been put in your folders, and that's at your place. Um, name tags, hotels, um, uh, and arranged expenses are all should be done and taken care of. You guys should be set and ready to go. Um, lots of invitations, especially for Friday night. So uh, make sure you look through those and kind of have a plan with that. And if we want to talk further, off, you know, off board time again. Um, also, too, if you end up changing your uh, plans late, make sure you contact your hotel so that you don't lose your room because they do give away with how busy it is down there. Um, uh, but then anybody that's going in Thursday night, maybe we can talk a little bit and get some coordination for you on Thursday night. When you get it. Congratulations to all of our K-5 Golden Apple nominations. There is a reception no, uh, November 19th at Rockford University. It usually starts around 4.30, gets done around 6. Um, would like to invite any board member. If you'd like to go, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to put um, uh, something in the reservations to, to expect us. So, um, And then the last thing that I have, because a lot of the other stuff will be hit through committees and some of the board goals, we just sent out what is a required Title IX survey, but I also put something in there um, about an athletic survey, kind of looking to get more of a climate feel for all athletics. We went to 7th and 8th, at uh, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade students and parents um, with just some uh, questions trying to help look at our current climate and ways uh, that we can do things better to make sure that we draw kids in and make them feel part of schools and uh, do what we can through our extracurricular sports and programs to keep them involved. So um, I'll take any questions if you guys have anything. That was Tuesday, November 19th? It's, uh, yes. I think it is a Tuesday? Tuesday, November 19th. It's usually about 4.30 to, they usually do like hors d'oeuvres and speakers and then they usually wraps up on six if you're interested. I'd like to go to that. Okay. Would anybody else like to go to that? It'd be at Rockford uh, University. We should try and support.
Teachers if we can. Consider it. <coughs> Joe and Mary. Uh, put us down. Now make sure you get details. Any other questions for Mike? All right, that brings us to committee reports. Policy committee. Uh, we have the second reading for the policies in tonight's stuff, and um, we don't have any plans to meet for right now until we get a little more information on some of those policies that we table. We we're probably due for another quarterly report, so it's probably coming. Maybe January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Business services. We did not meet, and I think you want to speak to that, Mike? Yeah, so. Um, We've got curriculum set is it December 4th or December 4th um, for 345. We've also looked to do something with business services. We also talked about doing something with facilities. I didn't know if the board wanted to just lump three together right in a row. Um, for those that stay, then they can stay for whichever ones and come and go for whichever ones. But it's all locked into one night, so anybody that wants to stay can get all three meetings if they want to. So um, I was tentatively proposing 345 for curriculum. I think it was 534 uh, facilities. We could either do something at 645 or 7 uh, for business if you guys are okay with that night. That was the 3rd of December? Fourth. December 4th. Fourth. Fourth. Be a Wednesday. Starting at 345 for curriculum. I do facilities at 530. <coughs> And then business right on the back side of that, and then it doesn't wipe up two nights if that works for you. Time's kind of crunched this time here, so. Everybody okay with that? Well, I'll work with Kelly to get a, uh, tentative agendas up to you, and we will get placeholders and calendars out there for everybody. Everybody's got, I think, the dates already set for curriculum business. We'll add facilities to it. We'll let's make a night of it. And I'll, I'll bring dinner. Mary will bring Christmas cookies. Mary's bringing Christmas cookies. <laughs> Mary, my meeting starts at 3 30. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's my car only those cookies. <laughs> All right. Uh, that brings us to facilities. <clears throat> we met. Uh, we got updates on uh, some of the projects that are currently uh, going on uh, throughout the district. Um, Still, some work to be done there. Um, we got updates uh, as far as where we were on life safety work. Um, I think we expressed a desire, I guess, with Jimbo to potentially get some of that work done ahead of the summer, if possible, to try and maybe capture some savings on, on some of that work. Um, if it doesn't work out, I certainly understand that, but I think we expressed the desire to see if some of those prior projects perhaps couldn't get knocked off when kids aren't in attendance during the school year. Uh, keep them away from the uh, summer work. They essentially are, are budgeted from a different pool of money anyway, so it would help us keep the keep the work a little bit more separate. We began to start to narrow down the scope of work for the summer. Um, I think that we sent Mike and Jimbo and, and Melissa home with the charge to develop a budget and start to put some numbers with some of those projects so we understood the scope of the amount of money that we were going to uh, go from sales tax revenue into those projects and the last thing that we talked about was uh, the preventive maintenance plan and the potential of, of looking to uh, put some cost controls on, on what's currently being outsourced um, had some discussions about potentially adding a position but uh, we're going to look at some other things first so um, that's the scope of that uh, of our meeting the summary of what we did Ed. Finally, CIA. So the curriculum uh, committee met on the 30th. Uh, we had a pretty productive meeting, and I'll try to give some summaries. We do have some more information coming before the board, so I won't go into great detail. Um, our meeting centered around uh, Mr. Hubert bringing some course proposals. Uh, we spoke about transitional math, an intro to engineering class, and a Spanish to honors course. Um, those three courses were approved by the committee to come before the board for approval. And December meeting. December meeting, yeah, correct. Not, not this meeting. Uh, we did also discuss an anatomy and physiology course, which we uh, decided to table for um, later review and continue development there. Um, we spoke about uh, our eighth, uh, our fifth through eighth student retention and promotion strategies. 
as well as reviewing our policies. Um, that discussion um, from Mr. Peterson and Mrs. Lewis uh, resulted in uh, actually why we want our December meeting uh, to review uh, and refine that process. Um, we, Mr. Hubert presented some of our uh, developing career pathways for our high school students and cooperating with Mark Valley College and some of the surrounding um, high schools and other districts. And we also had our initial state data release. I think the embargo was lifted at noon, the day of our meeting. And so Carrie gave us a, an overview of our um, report card and our assessment data, which I think we're going into greater detail. That would be presented at the December 17th full meeting. Yeah, tonight. That's being presented tonight. But you're meeting on the 4th once again, and we'll be presenting the courses to us on the 17th. Yeah, of course. Of course. Will anatomy be in there? Or is that no. it? It won't be brought back. Questions for Carl? Hearing none, we will move to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion, please, for the approval of the consent agenda consisting of the minutes of the regular meeting of October 29th? Personnel, Group 8 program requests, set dates for hearing of the 2019 tax levy, approval of the IASB press subscription renewal, and Title I parental involvement agreements. Second. A motion by Maxi and a second by Law Holland. Roll we'll call. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Mrs. Maxi? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Mohan? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Mr. Hazelhurst? Yes. Mr. Hammerly? Yes. Motion passes. Just an unfinished business and the second reading with approval of policies. Yeah, nothing here to ask. We uh, that we're asking for any additional. We brought them back for the first reading at last meeting. This is just for the procedure. Yes, these are the seconds. Uh, recommended that these other policies are passed. Can I have a motion and a second, please? Make a motion that we approve the policies as presented. A second. A motion by the <coughs> seat and a second by Hazel Horst. Roll call, please tell me. Mrs. Nancy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Yes. Mr. Brody? Yes. Mr. Hazelhurst? Yes. Mr. Hamlin? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Motion passes. Brings us to the levy. Yep. And Melissa has been presenting that. I'll turn it back over to her if there's anything she wants to add or go through. But um, we've had conversations at the business committee, and I can believe we presented it at last board report meeting. Um, so, Melissa, I'll turn it over to you if there's anything you want to add. Yeah, uh, the only thing that's changed since the last time I met is that they did release information on the grant. Uh, million that the state gives out they basically give it out in order of need um, last year I think the like top 25 schools were awarded the money um, we're at about 63 so I would recommend as we go through the living process when we get to next month that we do apply for it because it doesn't hurt to apply for it um, we are up there I mean out of 800 schools we're at 63 so we do have somewhat of a chance if somebody weren't to take it but that's the only change that's happened um, I will bring this back to the December business committee meeting and we'll talk about any changes um, for recommendations of the abatement question and what we're going to do there. Um, but otherwise, that would be pretty much the same. All right. That was merely information. Any questions for Melissa? Thank you. That brings us to the employee assistance program. Yes, Melissa, you had a little more information on that, and I know that we were recommending to approve all the versions of the Employee Assistance Program tonight. Yes, so nothing has changed since the last time I presented. Um, I am coming forward um, with you guys for a recommendation to approve three sessions for each staff member. That comes out to $1.28 per employee per month, so right around $3,800, depending on our, our employee numbers fluctuating. Uh, but this would give every employee in the district three sessions to use with um, the EAP program. So will there be, will we get a report of to the extent to which we utilize yes. this? Yes, yeah, so my goal would be next year, November time frame, come back and say, this is what we've 
use, I'm recommending to renew, or this is what we use, and I'm, I'm not seeing that this is worth our price. Thank you, Melissa. Any other questions for her? <clears throat> Motion and a second, please. Approved as presented. <coughs> motion by Tom Holland and a second by Hazel Horst. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Mulholland? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Mr. Hazelhorst? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Motion passes. That brings us to board goal initiatives. Yes, just uh, that is a placeholder we hold on our meeting every month. Um, I have updated again for the superintendent's performance and academic goals. Uh, put bullet points in there again. I'll keep doing that every month for you so that you can kind of see what's going on and how we're progressing with each of the goals that I'm doing. Um, and I believe you wanted to touch base with uh, some of the board goals. <clears throat> just to see if there had been any progress on any of our goals, the social and emotional needs plan. We did have a meeting last week to kind of everybody get together, and um, we are going to meet again after the first of the year. We're trying to get some um, plans together. Some of the schools are already doing some things, um, so we're going to try to see what everybody's doing and, and get some, um, see what some other schools are doing, and get um, the, everybody that was there. If they have ideas. They're going to let Mike know, and we're going to come up with needs assessment. Needs right. assessment, and then we'll go from there. technology plan, Mike and I talked, and we are making plans to move forward with that. Did you want to give any dates? Or no, I will set that up with you as soon as I get uh, on the back side of this meeting. Okay. And then large scale facility plan and district projects, Ed and Brian. So, go ahead, Brian. No, well, you, I've just been going to the facilities meetings. So we are working on budgeting and planning. Um, we are beginning <clears throat> to take a uh, a broader brush, I guess, to see where see where uh, some of the um, projects will lay out in the three to five year time frame. Um, also, beginning to look at uh, possibly making some other projects uh, a higher priority, but those discussions are still to be had. Hey Brian, you're in the Boosters Club, are you not? Yes. Okay. And at the facilities meeting, it was mentioned the other night. Um, that we would begin to collect the data to begin to review what we have from the past, what might be utilized from the past, and <coughs> we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Gather yeah. materials. Okay, I think the pushers were pretty excited to hear that. Yeah. Excited to hear that. Absolutely. All right. Um, that brings us to common assessment and data usage plan. I suppose that's more in my area. I don't know that we've specifically talked about that goal yet at curriculum committee, but I believe that um, CIA meetings um, happening a bit more frequently, as well as data release that we've begun to review and our conversations between Carrie and I about how we can best leverage that group to um, or best utilize how it is a uh, cross cross sectional representation for the entire district, district academically. Um, I've been encouraged by our conversation through the course proposals at this last meeting on how we can find uh, a stronger way to create outcomes that are measurable, that can be assessed uh, yeah, through that process and uh, strengthen our, our application. We could probably also, at the next curriculum, give a bigger update of the work we've done, because we've done, we've been working with tail on we've got a lot done. Um, sometimes we put you on the spot because she can get real down into the deep detail, but we'll, we'll try to do something to bring the data and bring something back to the board to know yeah. that. Because there's been a lot of work going on. And I'll have the board to know that. Uh, and then Tom, the supplemental abatement plan. That, um, <clears throat> the current plan is that will be one of the items discussed at the December 4th board meeting or business services meeting. Um, at that point, we should have more information on anticipated bus purchases and Coltson and things like that. We kind of know where, where we're at, so okay. should be. All right, thank you. Um, everybody, thank you. Folks, thank you for all the committee work that you're doing. I, I know it creates more work for everybody, but it's it, uh, it seems like the right thing to do to be having all of the meetings that we're having to, to kind of keep momentum going forward. And for 
for those of you in the audience, uh, the board goals that we set um, almost all ended with the word plan. We didn't necessarily want to get anything done or finished this year. We just wanted to do a lot of investigating so that we had a bunch of plans on the table. Maybe next year we can then tackle one of those plans once we have a plan together. So that's what this uh, conversation is centering around. So again, thank you everybody for your hard work. New business, that brings us to new business and the 20, November 2019 bills. So um, thank you all. What I've done tonight is I've presented a kind of broad overview um, of our state data release. And, um, and then, of course, we'll have time for questions and things as well. So we can really, you know, if you have any questions about where we are and what we're going to do moving forward. Please, Kelly. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk a little bit about, um, so, or we're going to talk mainly about our state assessment data um, for um, our assessments in literacy and mathematics. We're going to be looking at data from our Illinois Assessment of Readiness, which is the IAR, and that is for our students in grades three through eight. Um, and then for eleventh grade, we'll be looking at SAT. And then we're also going to be looking at some assessment data from our assessment in science, the ISA which is taken in grades five, eight, and then in biology at the high school level. So we're gonna start with the Illinois Assessment of Readiness for grades three through eight. And we're gonna begin by looking at growth. Um, growth is a new measure on our state report card for our elementary and middle schools. Um, we have not, the, the state has not reported on this before, so it's kind of an exciting new measure for us. Um, and what you see here is our growth in our buildings. The blue bar represents IAR growth in ELA or in literacy, and the red represents IAR growth in math. The very last bar, the last two bars is the state average. Um, and so what you can see here is that Capron Elementary had higher growth than the state average in both literacy and math. Poplar Grove Elementary had higher growth than the state average in literacy, and the upper elementary as well had higher growth than the state average. Um, so we're excited about that, to see that we had some schools um, and some grade levels that did have higher growth. Um, and this, with this being a new measure for us, we're still learning how the state is reporting, but what they do is they really compare our previous year's scores and where our students were um, to other students that fell into a similar percentile. And then, you know, if we grew more than them, then of course, then we show higher growth. Um, so that is how they're calculating this measure. Next, we're going to look at IAR specifically, so grades three through eight, um, and we're going to focus on ELA or literacy. This, sli this slide here shows our trends um, from 2015 to 2019. For this year, our data, um, we went up one, we increased one percentage point from the 18 to 19 school year. This year, 32% of our students met or exceeded standards on IAR in grades three through eight. So that's as a district. Um, we, um, we are a little bit, as you can see, we are below the state average in IAR in literacy. State is in red, district is in blue. But we did see a 1% increase. The next slide shows you our district data by grade level. 
So this does not have the state data on this slide. Again, we're looking at data from 2015 to 2019. Um, and what you can see here is, of course, we can see a lot of ups and downs and different things in different years. Um, what I'd like to point out is in grades three, four, five, and six, those grades increased from 2018 to 2019. And in grades four, five, and six, we've experienced positive growth since 2015. So those are some of our highlights of where we're seeing positive trend growth over multiple years, um, looking all the way back from 2015 to 2019. Carrie, is, is that that graph that, like, what's in third grade, the, first, the blue bar is now the red bar? And I'll have a, yes, and we'll have a, I have another slide that has a table that will show us cohort growth, because this is harder to read. I have one in a table that will look at cohort growth as well. To yes, it. to try to simplify it and look at it a little bit more cleanly. So this, yes, you could follow, like, blue to red to yellow, but that just makes, and it's the same, then that would be the cohort of kids. But it, I have another chart that will look at cohort data. This is cohort, cohort data. Um, so, and I did it with numbers instead of the, the bar chart here. Um, so what we can see, the very first cohort, grade three, those are our students who took the assessment for the first time last year. Um, and so then as it works through, you know, the very last cohort, cohort six, those were our students who were in eighth grade last year who are our current ninth graders. Um, what we can see here in looking at trend growth, we do, I mean, overall, um, we're, we trend downward. Cohorts two and three, which are, you know, they don't have as much trend data. We have positive growth there if, with the cohort of students. Um, but some of our other trends we see as, as going, you know, they're, they're trending downward. So this is still all literacy, it's our ELA. And then the next slide is our district and state comparison by grade level. So this is our 2019 data only by grade level in literacy. So you can see here, um, fourth grade actually is above the state average in literacy. So we have more students meeting or exceeding um, than the state average. Grades three and five are equal to the state average. And then grades six, seven, and eight are below. And now we're gonna move to math. This is, now we're still talking about IAR, grades three through eight, but we're gonna look at our math data. This shows, um, so back kind of how I started with ELA at the beginning, this is um, our trend data as a district in grades three through eight all together, um, looking at how many students, or percentage of students that meet or exceed on IAR in math. This year in 2019, 22% um, of our students met or exceeded state standards, which is the same percentage as 2018. So we stayed the same in math from 2018 to 2019. On the next slide, we see district data by grade level in math. Um, and this only has district data, not state data. Um, what we see here is in grades four, six, and eight, we saw an increase in percentage of students meeting or exceeding from 2018 to 2019. Um, all of our other, our other grade levels had a slight dip or third grade stayed the same. Here is our data by cohort. Um, in our math cohort data, we do not have any positive trends. We see each cohort trending downward. And then in our district and state comparison, um, we can see um, in, in third grade and fourth grade, we are much closer to the state average than we are starting in fifth grade. Um, we can see that our trend, it follows a similar trend to the state, except for we have a larger dip in those middle grades, um, but we see the trend um, on the state data also trends downward in those fifth and sixth grade years, and then kind of starts going back up in those seventh and eighth grade years. And we follow that, we just have a larger dip. So now we're gonna switch to high school. High school, we're gonna look at SAT, but then we're also gonna look at ninth grade on track and graduation rate, as these are both um, components of our state report card. So first we're gonna look at SAT, um, and the, this is the assessment that our 11th graders take in both literacy and math. Um, in this bar graph, all of our district data is on the left, and our state data is on the right, and the colors are by year. And so you can see this year, um, in ELA, we did dip. We were down this year from 2018 to 2019. That is the yellow bar. Um, and the state is trending downward as well, but of course we had a larger dip this year. The next chart um, shows math, our math prof proficiency. Oh, and I apologize. We, were, we had, our ELA proficiency was 31%. I apologize. 
Um, math proficiency, our math proficiency this year as a district was 25% for SAT. We did trend downward. Um, last year we were right around 32, 33%. Um, the state had a slight increase this year um, from 2018 to 2019, about one to two percentage points. For on track for graduation, this is a metric that is used as part of our um, summative designation for high school. Just to make sure everyone understands what this metric is, a ninth grade on track is um, where we identify students who are on track to graduate in four years. So for a student to be considered on track at the end of ninth grade, they have to have earned at least five full year credits and they have to have, to have earned no more than one semester F in a core course, which would include English, math, science, or social science. Um, and we, this is an important data point for our state because we know, um, or for all students, but our state tracks this because we know that students who finish ninth grade on track are almost four times as likely to graduate high school on time. And so that is why we, we keep that measure. So what we can see here for ours is um, this year, 80.4% of our students, our ninth grade students were on track to graduate. The state average is 86.6. .6, so we're a little bit below the state average. Um, with ninth grade on track. The next slide shows then our four-year high school graduation rate, which for the last two years, we have been above the state average. Um, this year, our high school graduation rate for four years, so students graduating in four years was 90%. The state average is 86. So we are actually above the state average in high school graduation rate. High school graduation rate is tracked for four years, five years, and six-year graduation rate. I only have a chart for the four-year graduation rate because, of course, we want our students graduated in four years. Um, however, for our five-year rate, we are at 89% and the state is at 88. And for our six-year graduation rate, we are at 86% and the state is at 88. And that's a very small number of students that, you know, have their, that are tracked that fifth and fourth year. Um, but we have, I'm really excited that our high school graduation rate for the last two years has been above the state average um, at 90%. Next, we're going to look at the Illinois Science Assessment and our data here. This is taken for our fifth grade, eighth grade, and in biology. So this is our state level proficiency, so, uh, or our district level proficiency as compared to the state. And this is all of those students, fifth, eighth, and um, biology combined. So our average in 2019 is 39% of our students were proficient or they met or exceeded the standards. Um, compared to the state that the state is at 49 percent the last two years we were at 44 percent proficient so um, we saw a slight decrease this year in our isa scores the next slide shows those scores broken out by the grade levels that take the assessment as you can see here fifth grade is above the state average so um, i'm very encouraged by that um, at fifth grade 58 percent of our students uh, met or exceeded at eighth grade, 42 percent, and at uh, biology, so mainly ninth grade, 23 percent, um, which both of those are below the state average. Next, I want to talk a little bit about our summative designations. This is um, how the state, you know, really kind of determines our score um, for um, our report card. Our summative, summative designations from the state are determined by all of these indicators that you see on each wheel here. So we have a K-8 um, wheel and then we have a 9-12 wheel. What I've just talked about um, with our state proficiency data in math, ELA, science, and in growth are all seen in that K-8 wheel. Um, you can see growth is actually 50% of our, of our designation from the state. And, so that, and that's a new measure. Um, and so they're really trying to look at how are students growing in the districts and are giving us then credit for that, which is very exciting. Um, and then you can see math and ELA proficiency are both 7.5%, and then science proficiency is 5% of our overall score. The other um, the high school wheel, we can see that graduation rate it holds the most. That's 50%. Um, so again, with our high school graduation rate being high, um, that's a really good indicator for us. Um, math and ELA proficiency, again, is 7.5%. Science is 5 And the ninth grade on track is 8.33%. Um, and then you can see each one, there's a few other things. I just wasn't presenting on those tonight. Um, I was looking at more of our assessment data. So in terms of our summative designations, Kelly, if you would like to go to the next slide. 
Um, this year, um, when our summative designations were, were released, most of our schools, as you can see, are commendable. Um, and we have one school that falls into the underperforming category, and that is North Boone Middle School. Um, and so we fall into that ca category due to one subgroup of students, and that is our students with IEPs. I want to remind um, the, the board about the work that the district has been doing over the last few years around curriculum. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about our next steps. Um, but in the 16-17 school year, teams began working to determine priority standards for science. And then that next school year, we implemented new science resources and we determined priority standards for math. In the 18-19 school year, we implemented new math resources in grades 6 through 12. And we continued to work on standards and pilot math materials in grades K-5. And then this year, we implemented or are implementing a new math resource in grades K-5, um, as well as then adding on to this work um, in terms of beginning to work with new curriculum teams. Our next steps as a district is we're really trying to focus on school improvement and what we can do um, to obviously increase student um, achievement across all of our schools um, and across all of our students. So we are partnering with the Regional Office of Education for their school improvement planning process and we're going to be using the Illinois Quality Framework to do that. The principals have selected their SIP teams and the SIP teams are coming here um, for a full day of work. Our K-4 buildings will be working on November 18th and then our 5th through 8th, our 5th through 12th grade um, buildings will be working on December 12th. And then from the curriculum lens, we are working this year on creating curriculum-based assessments as part of our balanced assessment system to assess student proficiency on our priority standards. And our goal is that in next year, we will have those assessments to be used in math and science. Uh, because those are the areas that had curriculum developed or started to, so we're building those assessments this year to put them into place next year. So when we talk about common assessments, then we're beginning that process as um, curriculum teams this year. And beginning ELA work this year as well. We'll be getting ELA and social studies work this year. We won't get to the point of writing those common assessments this year as we're just determining our priority standards and unpacking those. We welcome questions um, or thoughts from the board. Going all the way, <clears throat> going all the way back to the beginning, when we talked about growth on one of the first slides, what exactly are we talking about? So our growth in IAR, and so our growth in the number of students who show growth <laughs> in their proficiency score. So not necessarily the number of students who are meeting proficiency, but the number or the percentage of students who grew compared to their score the previous year and compared to others that had similar scale scores the previous year. So they didn't grow 42 percent. They and it means 40. Grew some, grew some amount. It, they grew some amount. What it means is 42 percent of or it means that the percent that percent of our students grew that much. So yes, yeah, so when we're our, at Capron Elementary in ELA, you know, we're looking right around like 58% of the students at Capron Elementary, we saw that, that growth. Mm -hmm. What are cohorts? So cohorts are the groups of students as you follow them through each year of school. So then we can follow them. So it's that set group of students, they started school, they started kindergarten in 2012. And so then we follow them through as we're tracking their progress through each year. And so we're following that cohort of students so we can look at their data from third grade to fourth grade to fifth grade and so on. So what did we learn from all of this? <laughs> we have a, well, I mean, so what we're, we're, we know that we need to go through a school improvement process. And so that's why we're going to partner with the um, ROE and further school improvement process to really review um, and dig in with our SIP teams around, you know, what we can do um, to help our students achieve more. We talked on one of the slides about assessments. Is, are, we, are we finally working to do internal assessments so that we know where we are individually before we take state testing? Is that the kind of assessment? Mm -hmm. So curriculum-based measures are those. So yes, we're working, we're creating those this year for math and science to be implemented next year. So what do you expect the SIP teams to be working on when they're here? on the December 8th, November 18th and December 4th. So what we're going to be using is it's called the Illinois Quality Framework. Um, and so it's actually a very large rubric that the ROE is going to lead those teams through and they're going to be evaluating their data, not only their achievement data, but their climate and culture data, 
um, and you're really looking at their, their continuous improvement approach in their schools. Um, so really going to be going through and doing a deep analysis of all of that and all of their processes within their school. So we have, I mean, that's available. We could show you what that looks like. We just didn't bring that tonight. I can, maybe with this week's update, I'll forward you what the Illinois Quality Framework looks like. And really what it is, is it's an internal audit of all the processes that you have in place. And it makes you use evidence to say, this is where we're at. This is what we're doing. I'll forward that out to you. And then there's an Illinois School Improvement Plan that they just got in line. Um, I'll forward you guys that one too, because that quality framework leads into your state identified school improvement plan. That hits all of the ESSA and the EBM, EDF, and everything. It's all tied together and linked together. I'll put that in my update this week. Thank you. Will all these uh, ROE sessions be done before our next curriculum meeting? They will. So Would you mind giving a an update? Summary? Yes, the, yes, we will have, yeah, because December 2nd will be the, the, the one for the upper grade. So, yes, that'll be finished before the next one. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Carrie, I don't know if you listen to NPR, but when they do the daily money report, they either play stormy weather or we're in the money, depending on how the market did that day. Mm -hmm. What would you equate this to? I, guess, I think that's kind of, <laughs> I, I believe that what might have been what Ed was sort of getting at is the general trend, good news for us, because that's a lot of data. It is a lot of data. And I'm not, never a big fan of that one right there. It's, that's just it's a lot to look at. It's a lot to look at. So I appreciated what you did with the, uh, the oh, graph. The graph, it's yeah. Easier to actually Trying to show see. a few different ways to look at, look at the data. Um, what I'm positive about, and, and I think, <clears throat> You know what? What I'm positive about is the the culture that we have here. That we're not afraid to look at the data, and we're not afraid to say, "Hey, what 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 does this show us, and what can we do?" Um, and so I'm I'm very I'm very positive about that. I think I'm positive about the growth data. I feel very positively about that and where we are. With that being the very first year that we've had the growth measure, um, and that we did see that we were above the state average um, in in a few areas, that was exciting. Um, and then I also think you know in terms of ELA and math at our at our kind of middle eight grades, like five through eight, we know that that's really where we have some work to do and where we see our students struggling. So I think in terms of that, that's really where we're trying to rally around and talk about how can we meet our students where they are and help them see growth. And so I think then we're having some good conversations about that. Slight trend in ELA the last few years, I'd say, across the district. Yeah, um, positive, again, yeah. The math trends we still need. That's got to grow. Yeah. The, you, we would hope, would we not, with the work we did in science, if you go back to the years that we worked on what subjects, we would hope that the science would have shown some improvement, yes? Yes and no. We're only in, um, we're really only in starting year three of, of new science curriculum. And actually, you know, they have new resources, but they don't have a full curriculum yet. And they don't have curriculum-based measures and assessments to really monitor the effectiveness of the new curriculum, which is what we're writing this year. Um, so I think it's been hard for them to know how well is it improving or not, because if they didn't have those curriculum-based measures. And so um, it does take about three to five years for any new um, initiative to really kind of take root. And um, what we're really getting at now is we might have really good curriculum on paper, and now it's time to really look at what's happening in the classroom and how we can then make improvements there. Any other questions for Carrie? Carrie, thank you so much thank for you. presenting to us today. Thank you know you. you didn't sing either of the songs, though. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna not answer that. <laughs> to special education if there are no further questions for Gary. Special education 2019-2020 workload plan. Hey, yes, this is a required step every year that we are, uh, this is a required step every year by the district. Um, Ashley reviews this with the committee and we are proposing the exact same special education workload as uh, Workload plan is what we had last year, and actually, I believe there was a change as they agreed to keep the document there. It was. Yep. So it's a formality that we have to do each year. <clears throat> Any questions for Mike or Ashley? We have none. Madam 
motion and a second, please. We have a motion that we approve the special education work plan for the 2019 2020 school year. Second. We have a motion by Maxi and a second by Rudy. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Mr. Hazelwood? Yes. Mr. Harrelly? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. 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 The motion passes. That brings us to executive session to discuss. The appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body, the legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity, as well as security procedures and the use of personnel and equipment to respond to an actual, a threatened, or a reasonable potential danger to the safety of employees, staff, students, the public, or public property. Can I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. So second. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Hazelhorst? Yes. Mr. Hamley? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mr. Nancy? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Mulholland? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Motion passes. Second to leave executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. We're back in regular session. We have no recommendations from executive session. Any announcements or other information? Mm -hmm. uh, Kelly, do you want to say anything about the budgets that we're supposed to request? How much? For the meeting beforehand as well as afterward. Correct. We have forms. In our we do have forms. The pre-approval yeah, pre pre and post-approval for estimates. If you're going to turn in the receipts. Okay. Just turn receipts in on the back side. You got the forms to be able to do it. And I guess we'll see everybody Thursday. Mm -hmm. Thursday. Oh, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Have a good evening, folks. It's a week from Thursday, Joe, because it's the longest November in the history of November. <laughs> We're in December.